So I've basically gone through and formatted this whole book from scratch. Um, and that's basically what you, all you would need for most fiction and nonfiction. Uh, but I'm going to make a couple more videos now on some of the more advanced features and also adding images and graphics. If you're trying to make a children's book or an illustration book um, or a word art book or something like that, then you may want to add a lot of images and graphics. There are some considerations, so we'll talk about that in this video. Uh, what I might want to do, I'll probably zoom out a little bit just so it's a little easier to see everything. Uh, and I'm actually just going to start dragging pictures in to see what happens. So here are some children's book illustrations I found online. Of course, if you're actually doing an illustration, a children's book illustration, you're going to have to hire your own illustrator and make sure you have all the rights that you need. Uh, and they have to provide high resolution um, copies of the art. So all I did was drop it in <clears throat> and it automatically split it between the text. So it added a little bit of um, spacing. The other option is just to, you know, get it where you want it first. You could just say like image two goes here. Yeah. And then later you'd go in and actually add the image. So I could just highlight this and go to insert picture and find the art that I want to use and insert that. So what I did at that time, when I inserted it, um, it didn't put it justified with the text. So I'm going to click this button and I can choose how I want it to show up. You really want it in line with text, so I'll leave it how it is. Um, oh, I, I understand why. The reason that um, it did it this way, here I just dragged and dropped it in and it fits full, full width um, and matches the text justification. Here I have the text style that's paragraph style, so it's actually indenting this picture, which is what you don't want. So if you want to center a picture, make sure you're using a first paragraph style um, to center the text. Uh, and this will, this is how you do it if you want it to match the, the, the width of the text um, and have the same margin. So that's fine, and for most books, like for a normal 6x9 book like this, um, that's what I would do. I wouldn't try to make it any bigger. But let's say, um, and also quickly I'll say, I said that this needed to be high resolution. Um, I didn't check these ones I downloaded, but they're not very high resolution. These are like less than a thousand. What you really want is um, at least 1200 pixels wide. Uh, this is a six by nine book. And so six inches is 800 pixels and nine inches is 2700 pixels. So to fit the width of the page of six inches, you would need about 1800 pixels. So generally, like if they send you at least 1200 pixels, um, you might be it might be fine for most ebooks. It might be fine if you're centering it like this because you lose a lot of space on the edges. But if you're doing a full width, um, like a children's book, you'd really want high quality art, at least 1800 pixels to match the width of a six by nine book. Um, although like if you're doing a children's book that's eight by eight, then that size would actually be a lot bigger. So you got to find out the page size that you're planning on printing on and just trying to get a 300 dpi page size. But let's look real quick. We'll go up here to layout size and I'll do an 8x8 eight eight book so you can see. This can be good for like an activity book or something where there's a lot of interaction if they have to like write in the pages um, and it can be good for most children's books. So in this case, because there's a lot of extra space, I would try to get this bigger. And um, it wouldn't go over here because it wouldn't want to get too close to the edge. Here it's kind of forced to, but what we actually have to do if we want to go full width um, is click up here on position and go with behind the text. Word 2016 isn't showing me um, things as like as much as I'd like them to. Uh, in earlier versions, you could highlight over it and it would show you in line with or behind or whatever. Maybe it's here. Behind text is what I would usually choose. Um, many of these options do the same thing. All it means is that it's going to let you move it around a little more. So I'd have to make sure there's no um, text on that particular page. And the other problem with making it behind the text is it can be hard to grab 
the image because it'll want to grab the text layer instead. Anyway, but if I do it this way, this is basically a full width image. Um, if you are using CreateSpace to publish, and they do do a decent um, full color picture, it's expensive, so it wouldn't work for like a full, uh, a massive book. But for children's book, that's like 12 or 20 pages, uh, full print in color is pretty reasonable. And so all you would do here is make sure you set on the CreateSpace um, choices, there's a, there's a choice that, do you want this to be, to have full width bleed or not full width bleed? So if you want the color to be printed all the way to the edge, like past the edge of the page, you need to click full width. Um, and they're a little picky about it. Sometimes it takes a few times or you have to uh, talk to customer support before they get it to set up the way that you really want it. They're a little picky with their settings and with the type of, of books. I've had some books that I'm sure don't go full width, but they still say I've chosen the wrong setting for whatever reason. It usually just means like there's something that's too close to the edge of the page. And so if you're doing a full width picture like this, you need to set that option on create space. But otherwise, like some other printers, it might not even be a big deal. So if I want to add pictures, this is basically what I would do. Um, I could do that for I'm just going to copy and paste the same picture because it's faster. And then what you could do if you were writing a children's book or a picture book is just write the text right over the picture. And all I would do is make it a little bigger and go up here to text color and change the color. I don't think um, in Microsoft Word you can add like a drop shadow to the text yet. It'd be great if you could. Um, actually, they do have some. Yeah, they do have some styles. So I could just go up here and add a drop shadow. Oops. Uh, that didn't work though because this is black text. So you actually have to go to shadow, add a shadow. I can't see that it's even really showing up, um, but I guess it's kind of showing up a little bit. So if you're adding text that way, you could actually lay out a pretty decent children's book um, straight in Microsoft Word without any other software. Oops, it changed the font on me, but that actually looks not so bad. So this is how I'd actually make a children's book. You could also do something like, um, make this picture a lot smaller if you wanted to just be on some of the page or you could crop it oops i'm going to put this back in line with text actually no So let me finish quickly. I'll just crop this here. And then I could make it something like this and then still have room on the bottom of the page for some text. I'd have to change the style. Word has some pretty decent styles. You don't want to go crazy. Um, I would just probably clear all styles and do a simple black text. Anyway, so you could add text out like that at the bottom of some white space underneath your picture for a children's book, and that works pretty well also. Anyway, for adding pictures, that's basically what you want to do. Just You can drag it in there. You can set them up how you want, and then add, either add text around them or add text um, over the picture. Both can look pretty good. So I hope that helps if you're going to be doing something like a picture book where you have lots of pictures.